Prepare yourself for the Tech Addicts Podcast. This week, we piss over a foldable tablet, AI identifying passwords by signs of keys, a wireless speaker that charges in the sun, farewell to Snapdragon Chromebooks, and the Xbox 360 store is closing down. Hello and welcome to the Tech Addicts Podcast. I'm Gareth, the host, and this is Ted, the co-host. The toast. How are you doing, Ted? That has to Ted. be the toast. Tedly toast. Gareth, the host, and Ted, the toast. <laughs> oh, we'll go with that from now on. Hello, yes, I'm fine, thank you. And um, two weeks down the line, and we still haven't had a horrible heat wave here. Weather report is that it is sunny and warm today, so the window's open. Look out for train noises, everyone. Somebody um, complained about that la- on the last show. Uh, so really? What was that dreadful noise, they said? <laughs> 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 and I said, well, Gareth has got this cavalier attitude to it and says, leave the window open if it's hot. So I do. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not working in sweatshops. It's just, if Mr. Ted is uncomfortable sitting <laughs> sweating out his eyelids. Um, we should we should afford him that luxury of being able to just to, to listen to something nasty going past the window. And apart from that, it's windy um, today and yesterday. I expect it's windy there as well, isn't it? Uh, it's not too bad actually. Um, but there's a there's a tiny bit of wind. There was a big wind yesterday, yeah, a yeah. big storm right. uh, that blew across the house, and everything was really dusty. Yeah, yeah I, I'd been out cutting some hedge and i noticed that standing in the wind my hair was full of dust afterwards and the hedge was full of dust too when i was wow. cutting it there was dust spilling all over me so it was a very dusty storm sahara sand <laughs> oh it could be that well it was it was more kind of bitty stuff i looked at my car this morning and it's covered in little bits Ooh. so yeah very odd could be worse. Could be far, far worse. Sounds there like are people problem. in this world who are suffering it a great deal more than yeah, us yeah. right now. Absolutely. We've got away with it this year, I think, in terms of heat anyway. I'm not sure about <laughs> dust falling on your car, but in terms of heat, we had a bit of a heat wave in June, but um, it could have been an awful lot worse, I think, this year. Uh, yeah. Anyway, there you go. I've got my new little boxy computer there it is sitting under there it, my little boxy computer it's a geekom it8 uh-huh. um and i decided to save some money frankly because i was looking at the it11 and the it12 and apparently next week they're going to be announcing the it13 um and i looked at the specs of them all and i thought to myself you know this it8 isn't a huge amount different to the later versions and it's 299 quid instead of like 500 quid same Mm. 200 quid and it's been absolutely fine it's made me realize that that giant computer of mine which is 10 years old was really clunky and slow and 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 lethargic in many ways and um this is just this this little thing flies now i haven't had any complaints with podcasting so far about noise but it might make a noise at the fa- if the fan kicks up. Can you you can't hear it now? No, but we could blame the next train going past. On <laughs> yeah, so in the context of my noise, anyway, it don't really matter much, does it? Um, so anyway, um, there you go. I've got my Geekom IT8, and it's a tiny, weeny little thing, and it seems to at the moment be working really well. It's an i8. It's got 16 gigs of RAM that I could put another 16 into another slot in. Um, mm-hmm. in, fact, in fact, I could replace them with 32, 32. Um, and That's got, overkill, Ted. Overkill. Yeah. Well, the, it's running absolutely fine as it is, so I probably wouldn't bother doing anything. Um, and the um, yeah, it's an i5, and it's got um, Windows 11 Pro on it. It's perfect. I'm very, very happy. And those, uh, there's an M.2 SSD in there. 
Um, yeah. And there's a 2.5 inch SSD as well. Yeah. Well, there's a slot. Uh, you, it hasn't actually got one. It's got a. You can you can put one in there, and it's got the plugs ready to to do that. The 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 the, the SSD that I got with mine is a 512 um, gigabyte, but you can choose you know whatever you want with that. All right. Okay. So you go away and get one of those nice big Samsung t- eight terabyte ones. Shove that in. You can. Yeah. Hmm. Nice, but I'm, nice. I'm, I'm guessing that if you did that, it might make a difference to the noise and the fan and what have you. No, it, sh- uh, SSD should be silent. Oh, right, okay, because it'll generate more heat. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I, but this All this testing is ahead. But as I say, in the context of the noise I create here anyway, it doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's... Uh... It's lovely. It really is very nice. And what's it like with all the cables coming out of it? Because it looks very neat in their pictures on people's yeah. desks and stuff. But once you start getting cables oh, yeah. shoved a into it. Nightmare. I'm looking behind my monitor now, and it's an absolute rat's maze of spaghetti <laughs> junction. There's cables absolutely everywhere. It took me ages to set it all up. Um, but yes, you're right. It, it's not pretty. But but what you can do is is quickly unplug everything and take it with you. So if I wanted to use it somewhere else where I had a monitor set up, like at my parents' house, for example, um, I could easily just lift it up and go. At, at two nine nine, I think you'd just buy a second one and have it up there. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> just hidden in the background. They wouldn't yeah. even know that it's there. Well, aside from the rat's nest, as you describe it. Yeah. But there's a pretty beefy power brick on there as well, which I suppose it's got to be secreted somewhere around your desk. Yeah, yeah, that's there along with the other one. I mean, there's there's just power bricks and cables and stuff everywhere on my desk. I'll send you I'll send you a picture of it. It's <laughs> yeah, it's not pretty, but I could. I mean, I could if I wanted to um, put most of it down under, behind, and under the desk and get rid of it. It's just that when I was setting it up, I wanted to see what I was doing. But once it's all set up and in place now, I suppose I could start trying to hide it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, you know, some people love that more than the actual building of the case. Um, getting rid of cables is is their pastime and just making it look <laughs> neat as tidy as possible. It's, it's really satisfying as well whenever you manage to do just just little things like feeding stuff through your monitor stand instead of having it across the yeah yeah the desk yeah. yeah. <sighs> Well, very good, very good. It's a, it's a nice little device, and I look forward to seeing your thoughts on it going forward as to whether or not it becomes the 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 the, the main computer in your life. Yeah, well, I think at the moment it probably is going to be because I put the big giant box to one side. The only the only thing about the giant box is that it's got a um, an optical drive in it, a very capable optical drive, and I, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I lose that. But then I was considering the last time, the last time I actually used that was when I got a DVD and I wanted to rip it. Um, yeah. But but I've I've got a plug in USB um, optical drive to do that with anyway. So um, you know it's no real loss to be honest. Anyway, yeah, um, so far so good. And we'll see. I haven't ditched the big box yet, but we'll we'll monitor it as we go, as you say. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, on the topic of the optical drive, I think I mentioned this once before. I did the complete overhaul and bought myself the new Corsair, Corsair uh, Elite jobby um, uh, case and all the bits that go inside. And it was only whenever I was repurposing my old tower to my son that I realized there was an optical drive in it. I don't know when the last time I used that was, <laughs> and I didn't even think about it whenever I came to do a complete overhaul of, of hardware. Right. Um, I do have a, a USB DVD drive, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. A DVD rewriter drive, which I think I've used a bit more than the actual one that was inside the computer itself. So I'd even forgotten that it was there. I went out and upgraded the DVD drive. The so, last yeah. time I used the op- the, the USB optical drive was when we were installing a brother printer at my mum's house and th- that was just years ago that's the last time it was used um wow. and th- and i've now noticed that that whole task could have been done by downloading the online files from brother anyway so yeah i mean optical drives apart from ripping dvds seem to be um not uh, at all necessary do they yeah, yeah. I'm just having a look through Geekom's website, and they've, they've got a few decent little machines there. There's a, they, they do an AMD Ryzen 
line as well. So yeah. there there are options too. I did look at Ryzen, and I, I I did some research on, you know, whether to go with i5, i7, or Ryzen, and most people were saying stick to stick to uh, to Intel. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think when it comes to the, the heat of the Ryzen as well, you probably wouldn't like a an extra heat source in your in your van during the summer. That's right. That's the one thing I regret about Ryzen is that it, it does run quite warm. That's the other thing I've noticed already is that I think I was saying on the show before that the heat that comes out of my monitor um, being driven by that huge box was significant. It was hot. It was blowing out hot air down the bottom. There's a vent at the bottom. And I'm putting my hand under it now and there's nothing at all. So I, I don't know what that says about the monitor or the new computer or the old computer, but that has gone. The monitor was producing heat? Oh, yeah, there's a vent at the bottom. When I was in the summer, I was trying to work out why this room that I sit in to do my work stuff was so hot. And someone said to me, it might be on monitor. And so I put my hand underneath, around the monitor. And sure enough, underneath at the bottom, there's a vent all the way along and it's blowing hot air out. And so I turned down the monitor um, brightness and that, and that's, that made it a bit less. Um, but as I say, that was with the big box, and now there's nothing. There's just nothing at all. There's, it's, there's no air blowing out of it whatsoever. So, I don't know. Bizarre. Mm-hmm. All right, okay. Well, we'll, we'll investigate that as, as we go along. Mm. All right. Um, well, as I, as I uh, mentioned two weeks ago, I have the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9. Um, I, it arrived in... Oh, was it just a couple of days before I I start I did the podcast, or was it due to arrive the next day? Yeah. I can't quite remember, but I have it now, and I've been using it for the last two weeks, and it's it's all very good. It's all lovely. It's all very super fast and does everything twice as fast as it did before. Mm. Um, but what I will actually say is, the book cover is fantastic. The what? Oh right, the yeah, book yeah, cover. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I I was initially not that um excited about paying was it 70 pounds or something for it but uh samsung have have really gone to town on this and designed something that i think is is worth getting some sort of award at the end of the day the whole the foldy bit on the back for the stand but also the ability just to uh pull off the front cover and set it aside um is is really inspired you know i'm I'm really impressed with the the flexibility of this bookcase and it keeps the tablet neat and tidy low profile that i mean there's there's virtually no footprint to this book uh bookcase as well and that really makes the difference the one thing i would say in in uh, a negative comment about it is the bulge for the s pen is a wee bit annoying and it'd be lovely if this could just sit flat on on the on the desk the s pen does mean that it it always sits up at a bit of an angle um and if you're trying to use it as a a notepad on a flat desk you have to take that into account because you'll be writing on it whilst it's at a at a small angle because the bulbous s pen sheath thing that's built into the back of the the bookcase means that you're never level when you're writing unless you take the whole thing out but in which case you've also got the camera bump to contend with but it would have been really nice had they put the stylus inside the tablet or something like that yeah. and and done away with that with that whole bulbous bit um uh, so the book, at the end of the day the book cover has got a keypad a, a keyboard no, that's the keyboard cover. Oh, okay. The book cover is the one sans keyboard. Oh, okay. Um, I've got one of those here for the S8, and yeah. um, I never use it. I always have the keyboard one on it. So maybe I'll, on the back of what you said, I'll give it another another go. I think I I had it on the S8, and I didn't like it because you couldn't unclip it, or was ah, the S7. Right. Uh, this one, you can just you can fully remove it. And then you've still got the bit on the back, which has the stand, but it, it's it's a, a cover in two parts. Okay. And and that's that's revolutionary. Mm. It changes the game considerably. Um, and I've been sitting there where I've, I've I've decided to play a game, sitting in my armchair, and you can fold the book cover back round, 
and then the stand will sit on the back on the front of the book cover's back uh, and and prop itself up like it's a flat surface so you know on your on your on your lap it is it's really easy to do but if you're if you want to prop it up on on a pillow or something like that where it's a wee bit uneven for that flat surface of the bookcase to be effective you can just pull it off right yeah i think it is different to my i was just looking at my one there and i think it is different yeah yeah no, it, it's just got so many options. I really like it, and um, the the ease at which you can just fold down that little standy bit mm-hmm. um, is is inspired. Well done, Samsung, for that particular um, innovation. Laying aside the the, the cover, though, <laughs> <laughs> what about the rest of it? <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a new incarnation of the the Samsung tablet. I I hate to say it, but it's as you would expect. Yeah. Um, you have the S8, so you have the exact same software mm-hmm. as what I'm using here. Yeah. Um, it it only has that performance increase, and um, and the likes of uh, well, waterproofing or water resistance rating, and uh, that that really adds a bit to it. Yep. Um, so you don't have to worry about it if you're sort when of running you, out you, to the car. When or you go swimming. <laughs> yes, you can use it underwater. Um, the the speakers, it's it's lovely to get back to the old Samsung speakers because they are so yeah. damn good. They're yeah. they're on a par with power with the iPad, uh, and and mo- moving away from the Lenovo. The Lenovo was rather good. It had some good speakers. The P11 Plus that I was using mm-hmm. for the last year, but uh, it's just there. There's a notable upgrade uh, to these speakers, and they. They really are lovely, and there's uh, there's quite a bit to be able to play around with to try and get. You can actually uh, go into the settings and make the sound even better again by turning on uh, Dolby and things like that. Mm, so, mm. Um, yeah, that's that's worth working out how to do. Yeah, yeah, so I'm impressed with the the speakers on mine. I always have been. There's four speakers, and it it it's just so much better than even the best of the best of the phone speakers. It, you know, it's it's a real step up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the S Pen is 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 there. Um, I've used it a couple of times. I wrote myself a note that said I am writing myself this note <laughs> in the hope that I start to use it a bit more. And I think that's the last time I've used it. Mm. Um, but it's it's not the main feature that I got this for. But uh, it's useful in the event that I need to use it for I don't know darts or something like that. Uh, yeah. like, you see these YouTube videos of people justifying what they use the S Pen for, and you think, well, I wouldn't do that, and I wouldn't do that. Um, yeah. they, they, they try to be really enthusiastic about what it can do and how clever it is, and you think, right, okay then. Well, it's nice to show someone, but after that you've shown them, it'll go away again. <laughs> well, when I was taking some notes and just, just playing around with it, writing a few things down, and it, it it does take a large amount of time to be able to adjust to naturally doing this. Whereas, you know, if you're if you're using pen and paper and you you make a, I I found I, I was making more uh, mistakes on or spelling mistakes and things and grammatical state mistakes because I think it was just it's a wee bit faster to write on mm-hmm. than a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. So your th- I think your thought your thoughts need to be quicker <laughs> when right. you're writing and you might not be k- keeping up with your hand I, it's, a, it's a weird thing to to say I, I haven't quite thought of it properly or 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 of this before because it, it is it there's there's less resistance on the screen when you're writing than there is when on a piece of paper yeah and uh, then you do slow yourself down because if you make that typo then you're like oh how do i delete that i have to go back and do i hit undo or do i get the pencil eraser or or what if i if i stick a line through it is no that doesn't do anything you know there's there's a lot of i think there's a whole world that you have to learn yes. in order to become natural at doing that Absolutely. but initially it's just faster and that's something that I can't keep up with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really impressed with the um, text, um, rec- you know, the, the transfer to text. Um, there's one uh, application I was using this week called, I think it was called Note Notepad or something. Um, mm-hmm. 
I'll try and find what it's called later. But it was just phenomenal. I, w- I was purposely trying to catch it out. I was, I was, I was writing as as badly as I could possibly do, and it still knew what I was saying. It was just really impressive. The algorithms and the AI, no doubt, are just very, very smart. Okay. All right. You'll have to let me know what that is because I, I have pretty dreadful handwriting when I'm. When I'm in the middle of it, you know, it starts out quite well and I'll I'll sometimes write all in caps just to make it look a bit more like text or type, Mm -hmm. you know, when when you're typing on a computer and it'll be easier to understand. (laughs) But uh, then it just quickly turns into doctor's signature material and (laughs) uh, it really struggles. So I'll provide a good challenge for it. Yeah, yeah. um, I was very impressed with that. But yeah. yeah. It's nice. And the and the, the pen charges on the back by the camera in the same way. It does, although it's never really needed to, because I think I, I, I haven't even got it down to ninety nine percent yet. It's right. been sitting at one hundred percent since it arrived. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Very interesting. I'm glad you're pleased with it. Um, and yeah, mm-hmm. I I can't really see the justification in upgrading mine because I'm no. I'm really impressed still with the LCD display. I don't feel the need for the OLED. Um, and everything about it is just absolutely stonking. So it, for me, it'll be two or even three generations, I think, before I even think about it. Yeah. See, I, I have a, I've got a very, very large uh, collection of poster art. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, got, I've got almost 24,000 images, and there's quite a lot of duplicates in there. And I've, 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 on, the, on the Lenovo, I was taking a, a bit of time just to... Just to get rid of some of the duplicates, mm-hmm. where I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, I'll download a thousand at a time and and go through and maybe get rid of say a hundred out of that thousand. Um, and I, I've got I got through. I think I'm up to D. <laughs> it's been about a year, but I've got up to D. Um, on the Lenovo, it used to take forever for it to delete a, a, a fairly large collection you know if, if once the the thousands have been dealt with and a, a reese uh I, you know put it back up to to uh google drive because i'd sync it between the two um whenever it was removing it afterward i wouldn't be able to use the tablet for a bit or sometimes the whole operation just went nope uh, there's not enough processing power to be able to delete all of these so yeah. we're just gonna leave it Where's the Galaxy tab? I've, I I did an entire letter in one afternoon, and I was like, whoa. And it just did it all instantly. I was like, D- delete 700 pictures. Brrr, yeah. All gone. I, I found that with wow. my... I've got a one terabyte um, micro SD card here, and I tried that in various devices, but the, the, the tab S8 was just... It just... It, 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 it pissed all over it. It was such an easy... <laughs> It was such an easy task for it, clearly. And every other device was just like laborious, kind of, for goodness sake, a bit like your Lenovo. Yeah, yeah. And the, the Lenovo was great and all, and it did what I wanted it to do, aside from that. Everything else, it was grand. That it, it could ed- ed- edit videos quite well. Not great, but quite well. Uh, whereas this just, uh, yeah, pisses all over it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a show title for you. <laughs> Maybe go with that. Gareth and Ted piss all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Tech Addicts podcast pissing all over the others. <laughs> right. Um, that's going to be in there. I wonder, can I get away with that? Can I? I don't know. I'm not sure as a show title. <laughs> well, there's only one way we're going to find out. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this podcast is called Anything Else, then someone like Apple has had a problem with it being called <laughs> having the word piss in the title. Right. Uh, well, I guess that kind of leads us nicely into the hard line for the hardware, because the first story is about Samsung and how they're working on a folding tablet. And this could be uh, the, the big change for maybe next year. Maybe this is the S9 will be the last one we see. And uh, or the Tab S9 will be the last one we see, and we they could bring out a whole new uh, uh, setup or 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 ad, uh, approach to how tablets work from Samsung, combining all the tech that we have seen over the last couple of years with the likes of the Fold Z or the Z Fold and the the Flip as well. If they combined all of that into uh, the the tablet that we know and love. Ted, what, what can you tell us about this? 
Well, nothing, because it's all speculation. Yeah. But the, the, ah. the, they're speculating that it will be called the Z Fold Tab, which didn't take much working out, I suppose. Um, and the leaksters who are leaking this, uh, to be fair, they've, they've been they've been very reliable leaksters. Um, Let's go digital have um, you know been been talking about this for some time, I think. But there is a, a photograph which I have seen before, um, which appears to be um, sliding the one part of it. So so it's not a trifold or anything. It's it's still a, a singular folding device. But the mm. like the Motorola um stuff that we looked at before, it looks like they made the, the, the riser, that was it. The Motorola riser, it looks like that part of this display could be sliding out to one side to make it bigger and presumably rolling the screen into it somehow in terms of design but as i say that's not a new photograph that that you know that's some render that's been kicking about for a while um yeah uh, but yeah it'd be really interesting to see what samsung do it's great that they're being innovative and moving stuff forward um and i'm sure that 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 bit of it is not speculation um i've no doubt at all it's really exciting working for samsung and on these new projects yeah yeah would you have a folding tablet would you think that's the way forward um possibly um i you see the thing is that i i'm surrounded by other options in my lifestyle i'm 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 not like you flitting off on trains and going in cars to work and trying to find best solutions for different situations so I, i've mm. nearly always got a windows computer in front of me with a huge screen and the need for this is very low for me but uh, so in answer to your question probably for me not but it'd be great to see the tech and it'd be great to see it working um and if they did a, a shrunken down version of, of this sliding thing as a phone if you could turn the phone in your pocket into a tablet um without the way in which they do it at the moment um then that could be interesting too i'm waffling now your turn <laughs> um yeah well i, I don't know that i i would be so enthusiastic about it i have uh, my chromebook is is a 360 chromebook oh yeah um and i can't think of the last time i actually used it in display mode or tent mode or anything like that it has just been standard laptop and i don't think that i would i would really welcome it with a tablet i like to sit down and just be able just to have a screen in front of me this requires an extra step in order for it to work and considerations to battery life, especially if it's got some sort of extending bit or or those sorts of things that uh, increase the, uh, the the area as have been discussed and might be a possibility for the for any follow up tablets that Samsung are putting out. But I, I don't know. Um, it is not better the devil, you know. Mm. You you wouldn't get a job at Samsung. You wouldn't with that, with that <laughs> dreadful attitude. <laughs> well, it, it's it's like all the people who are sitting on the guide or the bylines, uh, waiting to see what happens with flips and folding devices. You know, it, it, they're what on the fifth generation of them, and uh, I'm still not interested in buying one because I don't quite know that it's going to work as well as I like it. I would like it to. There's always something about it, like a, a bit of a fold in the screen or something that's that's putting me off. And yes, we, we have videos of people who are sitting there for 400,000 attempts to open and close and open and close. And eventually it'll break, whereas Motorola doesn't quite make it that far. Um, that, that, that kind of thing is... However, the Motorola flip um, is significantly less a crease in the middle of the screen. I've got one here. In fact, I've just sold it because, you see, the thing is that I, I think I'm a bit like you in that respect. Uh, that for me personally, for my own use, I'm. I think I follow what you're saying, and, and that these things are not for me. But it doesn't stop me wanting to try them out and have them here and review them and see what they're like with my own hands and my own eyes. Um, uh -huh. Whereas I think you're coming from a point of saying, "Well, I'll buy that when I think that I can use it." <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, I suppose. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Mm. I, 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 you, you're right. No, I, I am being 
overly negative today, I suppose. Mm, Maybe yeah, I, should, yeah. I should lighten up and be less grumpy about these things and embrace new technology whenever it comes along. Mm, Just yeah. not pay for it. <laughs> okay, so AI can now identify passwords given the sounds of the keys being pressed suggests a study in a load of crap that's on the Guardian newspaper <laughs> website at the moment. So essentially they're, they're saying that if, if a microphone was to record someone tapping on their keyboard, the AI could work out what buttons are being pressed. Um, I'm, I'm guessing as long as it's, it's spatially aware of how the room is set up and where the echoes might be and how close it is to the keyboard and which way round the keyboard is, you know, it it's a farcical idea but i suppose they're thinking more about i noticed in the in the article they were talking about a macbook where you're at a laptop so it it kind of knows the setup of that but for someone who's got a desktop and maybe has the microphone off to the left as i do you might have your microphone off to the right then i don't see it's quite a threat it might not pose that much of a an issue to to many people what do you think i think i I think that um the, the one of the points the article is making is that we're it's not just your microphone that you've got set up for your podcasting that we're surrounded by microphones and smart speakers and all the rest of it and this um study which um they're quoting is claiming a 95 percent hit rate um based on the sound of the keys as to how near they are to the edge of the keyboard for example so that you your finger makes a it will hit the if you're pressing the 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 p button on the right it'll make a your finger will be at a different slightly different angle than it will be if you're pressing the y in the middle because it's more central and blah 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 and the algorithms have worked that anyway they're claiming a success rate of 95 percent and they've done all their testing and so yeah um as you say it's a something and nothing study really i don't know why we're talking about it I, 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 you put it in the show notes. That's why I'm talking about it. <laughs> yeah, moving on. Well, and it's just here for us to piss all over yeah. again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so China is turning the screw on. <laughs> this is another one to piss all over. Uh, China is turning the screw on app distribution in the country. T- China has announced that it's going to have some uh, new regulations requiring app providers to register uh, business details because we know how effective they are at uh, dealing with the likes of Ponzi schemes and things like that. If you have a look at uh, what was it, uh, the, the, the uh, bicycles, uh, isn't there like a a huge field full of, a, of millions of bicycles because of the share a bicycle scheme like Boris bikes around London? They they jumped into that, and then there was uh, electric cars. I think there's fields full of electric cars, where a Ponzi scheme was set up about, you know, having ride share, which is a pretty good idea to be honest. Where you could go onto a an app and go, oh, I need a car somewhere, um, so let's go there, um, and you can go there, get the unlock the car, and get into it and drive it for a while, and then get out of the car, lock it, and then someone else can use it, and uh, the cars will be all over the place. But uh, yeah. Those sorts of things fell apart, and um, it was all used as as a as a money grab. Um, China saying that they're going to deal with app distribution and, and getting companies to register their app companies is going to uh, it, it's laughable to be quite honest, absolutely laughable. Ted, well, I think that um, the companies that are in China will not have a problem with this. They're used to. Um, the Chinese government wanting to keep control over whatever whatever's going on. I think the the knock on effect of this will be developers of apps um, outside of the the Far East and them not being allowed to have their apps in any of their their, their app stores or whatever system they've got over there in order to make them work and and you know we know how broadly iPhones are used in China as well um, so the developers um, who potentially live in America let's say will have to give their business details their home address and their all their their details to the Chinese government in order to have their apps be available over there um, and they won't do it the, the article is suggesting that um, it may um, encourage app developer 
uh, app developers from outside of China to do deals with local Chinese companies and try and wheedle their way in via third-party routes. But, um, Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's just more about control and the Chinese government and, you know, whether or not you support um, capitalism or communism as a kind of leading um, ideology on, on how you approach things. Yeah, okay. We should do a poll. Which is better, <laughs> capitalism or communism? <laughs> well, that should get people talking. Um, the uh, I suppose you, you know, you've gone with a very mature response there rather than my silly <laughs> nonsense. Um, but I, I still think that it would be nice if China were to do something about, you know, the say the Play Store and um, uh, the iPhone's uh, App Store having, you know, dozens of zombie army action game uh, nonsense that is just filling everything full of just resources that they found online and they've quickly put together and it's some crappy game that just is designed to show ads at every turn mm. um, and entice kids in or get them to download it by mistake instead of what they think it might be or you know the last of us knock off that isn't quite the last of us it's the least of us or whatever mm. Yeah, um, it would be nice if they were to stop that, but uh, no, it's they have nefarious. I'm I'm being negative again. Yeah, be careful. They'll come and they'll come and shoot you. Yeah, <laughs> that 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 happens quite a lot. Yeah, sure. So tell us about something that looks really positive. Okay, so Urbanista's Malibu wireless Ooh, speaker yeah, uh, charges the power in the sun. I want one of those, as yeah. I might say, in whatever works. It, yeah, it just looks great. I've actually got an Urbanista speaker here. I've had it for ages. It's quite old now because it's got micro USB charging port on it. But it but it works really nicely. It's a, a dinky little speaker, and it's great. I don't know why no one's done this before, really, or perhaps they have. I'm not sure if you know anyone that's done it. It, it seems to make sense. You put a, a solar panel on the top of a speaker. You're going out in the sun, down by the pool, down at the beach, and it's going to be charging the whole time you're using it because it's, you know, if you're not down the beach, then it's not going to be sunny, so you wouldn't be doing it. But they also claim that it works under, um, you know, lighting indoors as well to some degree. Um, and, yeah, I, I, it looks great to me. It looks like a nice size. It sounds like it's a, a, a nice choice for people. 150 quid, um, it looks like being, when it's been released. So it's not particularly cheap, but I think it's a really interesting idea, don't you? I do. I remember there being one before. Ah. Um, I think I had one in for review. It was either myself or, might have been Matt over at Tracy and Matt. But the... <laughs> The the solar panel was in the middle of the top of the the it was a longer um, elongated uh, speaker and the solar panel was in the middle and at either end there were the control buttons hmm. and they were made out of like a plasticky glass material the same as the solar panel and when I <laughs> sat it out in the sun I went to press a button <laughs> to put the volume up or skip to the next song you'd burn your finger because it was so hot <laughs> on top. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear well hopefully they thought yeah. about this this one looks like it's got a kind of cloth um a cloth exterior which wouldn't get too hot hopefully <laughs> yeah yeah well hopefully they just moved the controls to the side oh no they're on the top they're around the top it's the same thing then isn't it what it does well have... they're sorry they're on the border of the top Right, yeah. okay. What it does have is um, USB-C charging, which is great, if you need to charge it, which you probably will. Um, it's also IP67 rated, which is good as well. So it's just going to be... I mean, I don't think you, you... You're not going to go swimming with it, but... Well, perhaps you will. 6, 7, 6, 8. Perhaps you can go swimming with it. I think... Yeah. Yeah, I think it's um, 1.5 metres for half an hour or something, isn't it? Can't remember now. Uh, did it say? No, it didn't say in here. That's right. It just had the fifteen hours and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, nice. well. Yeah. No, it's it's a it's a great idea. I th- I think that someone should get it right. That makes sense. And we should be doing this with more things that we take out into the garden, uh, to to entertain us mm-hmm. or, um, or or that kind of thing. Um, I can't think of anything else other than the speaker right now. Perhaps a a water bottle or something that has a solar panel on the side that you could plug into a phone or an ice making machine just patenting that idea right now 
the, 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 the irony of an ice making machine solar powered <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> All right, uh, Dell has come up with a new monitor that can come down onto your desk to assist with touching it. Um, I th- this reminds me of what is that that, mi- that Microsoft Surface, computer that um, Studio is it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this this bends down at a particular angle, and it's, it's only twenty three point eight inch, but it becomes a touch screen display. Uh, to allow you to, as the ladies are doing in the picture, zoom in and out of a PowerPoint presentation with graphs. Or I think probably more artists, well, perhaps they are artists, but more to do with design and creation. The, the, the thing that we've always been told about monitors is that they're supposed to be up in front of you so that you keep your back straight. And you mind you, she's keeping her back straight using it there. Fair enough. But... Um, you know, bringing them down at desk level, I thought they always said that's really bad for your sight and your posture is, and yeah. all the rest of it. Um, but they're they're advocating that this is okay again now, it seems. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, she she doesn't have a wrist rest either, and she's got her, her, her mouse precariously close to the edge of the table. And also the laptop is not on a riser. Um no there, there's no blinds in the window in the background so uh, extreme sunlight could beat down on her and cause reflections might charge her speaker though <laughs> it might do yeah <laughs> um just uh just to just to note uh molto has uh has failed miserably again oh is it one hour yes. 20 yeah oh, for goodness sake it's funny, isn't it? How we've got this new just to to tell the listeners, we've got this new Skype recording, backup recording thingy called a Molto, um, because MP3 Skype recorder was not behaving very well, and I, I, we both installed it. We copped up our thirty quid, both of us, to use it without any obstructions, and Gareth's just seems to stop working at one hour fifteen, and mine just doesn't do the same. Really odd. Yeah, yeah, I got an out of memory error according to the log, uh, which uh, they say has been been, now been fixed, but evidently has not. Get back onto them. That's thirty quid. Certainly, they've got your thirty quid. They do. Yeah, I'm sure they didn't do anything just now. Then, okay, uh, moving into Xiaomi. Xiaomi have the Redmi Pad SE, uh, which is a rather nice looking new tablet that has an eight thousand milliamp hour battery and should only cost you around about 200 euro uh, there's a snapdragon 680 chipset inside of it with 128 gigabytes of storage a micro sd card that supports up to a terabyte or as ted has pointed out um, it'll struggle with that probably but when you fill it full of stuff um, and have three ram options four gigabytes six gigabytes and eight gigabytes there's an 11-inch LCD display, which is uh, 1920 by 1200, which is 90 hertz, actually, which is really quite nice. It's uh, ni- uh, 400 nits uh, with a contrast of 1500 to 1. Uh, this is a rather nice-looking, rather stylish little tablet that looks familiar. Does it? Yeah, that big uh, 2P-sized camera um, up in the top. Oh, yeah. Well, Was right-hand that corner. One plus. Um or was it the, yeah, OnePlus or Oppo. Uh, was it could, one of them? Could be. Yeah. Hmm. The, the, this this is all about the, the the cost, isn't it? Because it's if it's going to be 199 euros, it, it, it's not the best specified tablet. It's not going to um, it's not going to challenge your Galaxy S9. It, it's going to be a very functional tablet for more um, people, ordinary people sitting on their sofa, like that woman is there. Um, consume. holding her neck because it's so sore because <laughs> yes. of her posture these are encouraging poor posture like lying on the floor that way building Lego at her age um, it, it's not going to do any good to her back mm, yeah. <laughs> but yeah it looks good Dolby Atmos, high res audio blah de blah, 3.5mm audio jack hey. which the Samsungs do not have um, well they don't these days anyway um, but yeah, this is this is all about price, isn't it? And the, for for 199, well, actually, the eight gig version is two four nine euros. But anyway, I mean, it just looks fabulous for the money. I think definitely good. Good on you, Xiaomi Redmi. 
Yeah, yeah. I suppose you could have what four of these for the price of one of the S nines. Yeah, yeah. My Mars has been kit, dreadful there. Kit I your family out. Try it. Um, also from Xiaomi, we're getting the Mi. No, we're not. We're getting the Mix Fold Three, but we're not. Uh, which. Um, it doesn't have well. We, I'm sure we will at some stage. It doesn't have a global release date yet, but it's a it's a new folding phone. Um, that uh, oh no well, no maybe they, we're not, they no they said that they're not that they're not going to release. And this is actually in keeping with previous mixed devices. If you want one, you've got to import it, and they're never going to release it um, globally, which is a real shame because this this looks absolutely lovely. I think we might have spoken about it on the show before. But if you yeah. if you click through to some of the pictures of the thinness of it, it looks very much like a Surface Duo almost, and um, you know I, it's very thin and closes up on itself. And there's a a nice outside screen on it, and it just just looks lovely. And it's just a shame, I think, um, that we don't get in on it. You, if you if you import one, also it's fair to say that you won't get Google um, services. There's no GMS on it, so it's it's running a Chinese. Um, you know, version of, of fork of, of Android, and you get what they give you. Uh, it's a real shame. It is, yeah. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous looking with a, a like ear lens as well. Yeah. What are they thinking? Yeah. <laughs> they need to get that sorted. Get ones out here now. Yeah. We'll help. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll sell them for you. Yeah. Show me. Go on, please. Uh, yeah, so uh, it looks like um, the next wave of. Hang on a second, this says Snapdragon. I read that as Samsung earlier. Ooh. Oh. Uh, the next wave of Snapdragon Chromebooks has been cancelled. Oh, right, okay. That makes more sense, because I was thinking, why are Samsung cancelling all of their Chromebooks? Hmm. What's going on here? This is one of um, Robbie Payne's kind of meandering items about, um, you know, all things Chromebook. And to, the, to cut to the chase, what he's saying is that they've discovered that um, uh, Snapdragon, um, the, 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 they've decided that they're not going to be producing the uh, S. Sorry, this the seven C plus Gen three that they were hoping they would, moving it all forward and leaving the space open for MediaTek to do what they're going to do with Chromebooks um, uh-huh. and basically leapfrog what they're what they're up to. I've got a Chromebook with a Snapdragon seven C Gen two. And I have to say, the this is the, the Duet 3, and it, I have to say that it works really, really well. It's ever so fast. MediaTek, I have never, I don't think I've ever used a Chrome tab, a Chrome tablet or Chrome book with media t- a MediaTek chipset. Have you? Don't know. No. Right. No, I don't. No, I did. I th- there was an Acer one that I had a couple of years ago. Oh, was there? Yeah, it, was, it looked gorgeous, but it was slow as right, buggery. Okay. It really was. That's why I got rid of it. Okay, so in which case, you know, if they're going to go... If MediaTek are leading the way forward with their chips... <laughs> slow as buggery. Sorry, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll get a shutdown. Um, <laughs> the... The uh, Anyway, yeah, so apparently um, Qualcomm have decided that they're not going to be kind of be so behind Chromebooks and they're going to leave it, leave it open to MediaTek. But it's it's all a kind of bit speculative. <laughs> Why is that a phrase? I need to do this. <laughs> to buggery. I don't know. <laughs> it's probably something very sexist and probably racist too. No, it, it, yeah, no, it, it's, it's all to do with, with sodomy apparently, yeah, well. Oh dear! Right, Moving okay. Uh, I apologise. <laughs> I just remember saying that when I was a kid. That makes it even worse. Um, Meta Keys is a new mechanical keyboard that Ted you posted on this. This on the Mewi group um, yeah. from Geeky Gadgets. Uh, it's in a Kickstarter Indiegogo at the moment, and it almost looks awesome. Um, aside from how it actually looks, I think I, I was very close to actually backing this, but then I decided no, I don't want that sitting on my 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 table or my desk i'd much rather have a sexier looking keyboard this just looks a bit meh. um but everything is there because it's got a six in one hub built into it uh which will cut down on all those uh, are you all right Sorry, I've, i just kicked the microphone stand carry on 
Okay. I, I, so, no one's broken into your home there and sodomized you. Um, <laughs> it's, it's got a six in one hub built into it, which should cut down on your cables that you have uh, sticking out of your um, um, uh, thingy that you bought. Uh, geek, Geekum. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You could you could certainly use a hub, which I do. But in my Geekom, one of the actually one of the advantages of the later versions of the IT um, thingy is you do get more ports. That's fair enough. On the IT eight, you don't get as many ports. But I mm. but I I think I'm a bit like um, what I I agree with what you're saying is that the I don't particularly want all those cables sticking out the back of my my keyboard and that's why i wouldn't want to do it because i'm sitting here looking at my desk and if there was a if there was six cables coming out the back of the keyboard it would really change the way in which my my desk looked so i'm not sure who this is going to appeal to really um but it's 94 quid to back it it's made of aluminium um and it looked really really nicely made and the keys look as though they're good it's got a full size Mm. um cursor cluster as well um, and it does look nice for the right person who's going to have the right physical situation where that that they're going to be able to have all those cables flying out the back. Yeah, yeah, and also it's just got backlighting and all that built into it as well, and sort of rainbow effects uh, to help you write at night. But I just can't get past the the yellow keys. They they look like. Um, 1980s technology today, like an old Super Nintendo with with the the plastic color changing you can, that you, you get. You can change those. You can change the keycaps, surely. Uh, but then you have to go and buy a whole load more keycaps, mm. as, as opposed to the ones that come with it. What's, I that, just, what's that? Twir- it's like nicotine yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's that um, twirly thing in the right top right hand corner? It's a knob. <laughs> <laughs> it's an odd for uh, switching between devices. Oh, is it? Oh, is it? It's a, just. A, I thought it looked like a, maybe a, a mouse controller or something. Okay. No, I think it, it turns on Bluetooth and stuff. Okay. Um, I can't quite see where the. I did look at it the other day. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what it is, but it, I think I figured that was just a knob that. Um, yeah. Switch. Switches yeah. between your your devices, right? Okay. Yeah, but it, it's it's almost excellent. I I would have I would have been on that had it not had those nicotine yellow keys. <laughs> Next up is Samsung, who have an equally ugly looking thing. Uh, this is the alleged AR headset, not VR, but AR, uh, which has leaked online with images and uh, and detailed specifications. So it looks like uh, Samsung are putting good money into um, pushing out. Uh, an, an AR headset. I, I didn't quite read through the whole thing because I got a bit annoyed that they're, they seem to be getting VR and AR m- kind of mixed up. They're not terribly interchangeable, although I suppose you can do a certain amount of AR with the, the Meta Quest. But uh, yeah, what did you take away from this? Well, they quote the, the Quest 3 um, as, you know, they're, they're doing this because of the, the Vision Pro, aren't they? That Apple have come out all guns blazing with the Vision Pro and they and Samsung mm-hmm. have sat back and said, hang on a minute, they got there before us and so we're going to do one as well. And sure enough, um, out it comes. It's fair to say also that that photograph that we've linked to in the show notes there is not it. That's some sort of primitive prototype but if you read through all the sensors and stuff that is around it and what it does and and the air gestures it's all completely a rip off of vision pro which um apple are, um, are, are releasing so yeah samsung on catch up well it would be remiss of samsung not to do this yes. they they need to have this um because they will be missing out on a few coins they've got to keep up they certainly do. All right. Um, the last one we have to talk about in the hard line for the hardware is OnePlus, which has launched the Ace 2 Pro, uh, which has 150 watts of fast charging and 24 gigabytes of RAM. 24. Uh, which are 12 of which you will probably use. The other 12, well, you can tell your friends about. Eight, no, eight of which you, you'll use. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. <laughs> or even six. Or even yes. four. <laughs> P- possibly. You've got yeah, 23 but... gigabytes. 
<laughs> the, the, Elsewhere. The interesting. It does. <laughs> oh, go ahead. It's got what? No, you go ahead. Oh, right. Um, what I was going to say was the interesting thing about this is that this is the Chinese only version, the Ace 2 Pro. There's no global launch on that. But given, given OnePlus's previous behavior, um, it would it would follow that they release this as the OnePlus 11T. And mm. um, because last year the Ace Pro was relaunched globally as the OnePlus 10T. Um, and so it's going to be exactly the same thing. So we, so the, 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 there will be a global version of it. It's got, yeah, 150 watt charging, which charges from naught to 117 minutes. Amazing. But you've got to use the supplied Super Voic charger and the supplied Super Voic cable. If you don't, then you don't get those kinds of stupid speeds. Um, and... Yeah, I, apart from that, it's it's not particularly uh, that that's the the kind of the the, the USP they're selling on the, the, this on the back of, isn't it? Apart from that, I think it looks quite ugly, frankly, with that great big camera f- circle on the back bleeding off into the edge, like Samsung did with um, their Ultra mm. devices a couple of years ago. Don't like that, do you? Not particularly. No, no. It it actually it. It looks like a really bland phone. Hmm. It, it, I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't pick that out at all. No, no, you're right. Unless perhaps that material that they've used is like aluminium or something that's, that's really nice to feel. You know, soft and silky yeah. or something like that. And it's not just plastic. Again, they've, they've hit. They're going to hit it on price though. They're talking about the the 24 gigabyte of RAM version with one terabyte of storage um, releasing. Great. Releasing for um, five hundred euros, when it does, you know, they, they've they've equivalented, they equalised the the Chinese price out. And if you, and if that is true, then that will be a huge amount of phone for five hundred euros. <laughs> it will. It'll be. You'll use just as much as you would do with a standard five hundred euro phone. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's. Uh, <sighs> That's happening. All right. right. I'll, I'll be negative. I'm allowed to be negative about that one because you were as well. Okay. So. Uh, moving into In the Name of the Game, where we've got some exciting things to talk about. Uh, there's the One X Fly, which is a new Steam Deck cache and an Asus ROG ally rival uh, that, that looks very much like the Asus ROG ally on paper, uh, save for the Ryzen processor, which is a wee bit different i think they're based around the same architecture but uh, the, the rog ally um has more what the hell was that it's probably the, the wind that's blowing stuff around here no it sounded like something rolling down the roof Ooh. like a conker rolling down the roof <laughs> huh. bizarre I accidentally left my my uh, windows open last night, so I'm worried that something's moved uh, moved in. You know, a badger or something. Yes. <laughs> um, but, right. We don't uh, know how well they climb. <laughs> well, I think they could fly. <laughs> could have a hand glider. Um, so uh, th- this is a new portable gaming console that um, runs Windows of all things, which they seem to be shoehorning onto everything because it runs so well on modern hardware. Um, it's got 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's got 512 uh, gigabytes of SSD. There's like another one. Is someone throwing conkers at me? Or or might be little apples. Ah, uh, it's apples. Yeah. The apple tree is in bloom. Yeah. Right. Little ditty ones are falling off, or perhaps birds are taking them off and trying to take them away. Or perhaps the neighbor's kids are throwing them at me because I'm being too loud. Um. Yes, uh, t- t- yes, it, it has specs. Um, it's got a resolution of 1080p, where it, c- it beats out the, the Steam Deck there. It's got 120 hertz refresh rate. Uh, its uh, battery size is 48 watt-hours, which is the same as the ROG Ally. It weighs a little bit less than the ROG Ally at 580 grams, and it costs a little bit more than the ROG Ally at $740. And then for the top-end version of it, it will be $940, uh, which I... I can't quite distinguish the difference between it and the bottom model. I think it's probably just going to have the larger SSD in it, if anything. But uh, yeah, it's it's a decent looking little device. Um, 
It has Michael written either side of it in in gluey light. Michael? W- w- letter. Yeah, if you have a look uh, at the picture yeah. at the top. <laughs> I actually thought they were go faster stripes, but it turns out it says Michael. Yeah, Maybe that. it shows your name. Oh, right. But the, 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 the article's written by Matthew, so um, it's not Michael. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, what do you make of this? Aside from it being I, weird. I tell you what um, annoys me about this is why, why don't they put battery size in milliamp hours? I, I've no idea what 48 watt hours means, unless you're a mathematician or physicist or something. You've got to try and work it out. Or ca- why don't they just tell you what the milliamp hours are? I th- is it not because it's a, a it, it uses power in a different way um because some games run at different resolutions and they may be more um processor intensive they it is it's a better way of measuring how much performance you're going to get out of the device because at these devices including the steam deck it's it's almost a fine art to be able to balance out what you can do, and if if you're sitting at home playing a game, you can you can whack up the the graphical detail and um and the 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 power because you're you're hooked up and you're playing it in in your armchair or whatever. But if you jump on the train, then you need to, to in order to increase the battery life, you need to whack everything down. So I suppose that that is the same with your phone, but uh, it, it's it's more of a a better measurement to be able to work out what you need to do in order to rule it out. I see. Well, apart from that, there's no indication of size, and the picture that I'm looking at doesn't really help to just... just, It doesn't say whether it's, like, as big as the Steam Deck is. Um, I always thought, whenever I'd seen scale pictures of the Steam Deck, it's huge. Compared to my Nintendo thingy, light... Um, it's just so much bigger. But then you're doing an awful lot more with it. Someone suggested, actually last week, when I was looking for a um, computer replacement, someone suggested, why not just get a Steam Deck or an Ally mm, yeah. or something? Because it runs Windows 11 and you could just make it work for you and plug it in and blah, blah, blah. And I'd never really considered that. But then that's probably one reason why it needs to be a bit bigger than your Nintendo Japanese team machine. True, true. Um, yes, it, it would have been nice had they they actually said what size the screen was on this so that you could get an idea. Ah, but my Emoto uh, stopped. Oh, so it's not just me. Ah, right. Excellent. We've both got to go and complain. Yeah, yeah. Good news and bad news and good news and bad news. Sorry. Um, so... Yes, if they had put in the screen size, then we could have made a better judgment as to what this was actually going to be. Because if it turns out this, this arrives with a five-inch screen, uh, then it, it won't be worth worth anything to anyone. But um, it it does have the Joy-Con placement correct, in my view. Um, and if that screen is a little bit larger than the Steam Deck, and maybe sitting at about eight inches... Seven, no, seven inches probably. Uh, then I, I'd be quite happy with that. No, eight inches. We'll go eight inches. Yeah, because it's a wee bit more portraity or landscapey than than a phone. I think. How, would you care to guess? Uh, sorry, I was looking at my Amalta and sending a report in. What are you saying? Well, we could do that after the show. I wouldn't. I wasn't going to burden the the listeners with the whole oh, multi thing. Up. It's gone. Yes, oh. that's what happened to me the last two times. Brilliant. Right. Sorry. Sorry. What was your question? I don't know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was about the screen size of that. Would Would you reckon that that's probably a seven or eight yeah, inch? Yeah, probably. I would say so. Or I, six inch. I think it's probably the same kind of size as the Steam the Steam Deck and the the Ally. Um, um, yeah. But it looks really nice. It looks like it's nicely made from that one picture I can see. And it looks like it's a, you know, as long as you can plug it into a monitor, you don't have to actually use Windows 11 on that size screen. Um, only use it handheld for gaming. Then I suppose it's good. Aye. Aye. Well, uh, what you can't use for gaming fairly soon is the Xbox 360, because the store is likely to close. So I urge you, if you have an Xbox 360, to 
run to it, don't walk, run, and go and get as much as you can off the store and install it on the hard disk that's on there uh, because you do not know when that will ever be released again or if they'll expect you to repurchase it if they bring it to one of the newer devices that is out there because the xbox 360 has been out for 18 years 18 years and uh, the last game for the xbox 360 was released five years ago so microsoft have decided to uh, call time on the store and it will be shutting down after july the 29th of 2024 in which case you will no longer be able to access the 300 360 console uh, stuff um, some stuff will still be available if it's backwards compatible with the Xbox One and the Series X and Series X or S but that won't that won't be everything so if you have a particular favourite game I know I do have a couple um, then you need to go and get your Xbox 360 out hook it up and get those downloaded there so I, I do think that we'll start to see the sales of Xbox 360s beginning to rise on the likes of eBay. So if you've been looking to sell, this might be a good time, especially if you've got a largest hard drive, because uh, folks will want to uh, preserve those games that they have maybe purchased some time ago. I will be doing that later today. Even though I'm not running to my Xbox 360 console, I have a responsibility to tell you folks to do that uh, before I, I do it, because I... I care about you more than I care about me. Everyone seems to be ditching their gaming <laughs> machines, don't they? Well, they have to at some stage. They yeah. can't keep these going forever. And I, I do agree that we need to let things go. I, 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 I spoke to my son about this the other day, and he said, Daddy, can I put a PS3 disc in the PS5? And I said, I don't know if that works. I don't think it does. Um, and he went, but th- you should be able to because you bought the game. Yeah. I was like, well, yes, but also no. Because when I grew up, if I bought a Nintendo Entertainment System, I certainly didn't think I want to be able to put those games in my Super Nintendo game system that I've just upgraded to. I spent hundreds of pounds on all these games and now I'm selling it for 70 quid to a, a licensed bandit down the street. Um so that I can put that money toward getting two games for the Super Nintendo. No, you will suffer. You will see that life needs to do without backwards compatibility altogether. The process of evolution. It is, yes, and that's just me being deeply negative. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Okay. Well, uh so long xbox 360 it was a wonderful system it really was yeah, right. i still have one hooked up at the moment although i haven't turned it on in a long time i have another one down in the shed that i had a look at the other day and it was a bit rusty really quite rusty yeah did you ever have one no i never had this whole microsoft gaming thing and still don't and it's like ugh, i can't be bothered with it uh, you know, investing in... I, I, I was just... I go back to my Nintendo again, and, and they did try really hard to make the um, carts that I bought for my Game Boy, for example, work in later machines. Um, but everything's online now, and, you know, anything I want to play on my Nintendo Switch Lite, I can just use in the cloud or download from the cloud, and it's just so much easier. And I, I do see why these things happen but um yes they did try but you might have to repurchase things yeah um that's true but with with these subscriptions like i I said before i paid 30 quid i think it was for a, a year's access to anything i would want to use and so because that included a huge amount of other stuff that i'd never tried and tested and played with i didn't i didn't mind the fact that i'd um, lost the money that I'd bought the cup for the paid for the cart because the deal was that I get an awful lot more for my money anyway, if you see what I mean. But yeah, mm. I can see the other side of the argument as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, there's people out there who have 3DO games and they've got no way to play them. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
over on Gizmodo, they have an article about a very stupid product from <laughs> 8-Bit Do. Um, this is the, the latest tiny controller that weighs less than a single AA battery. It's so small that... Uh, well, you'll be very uncomfortable after a couple of minutes of playing, and it's not designed for, for playing for too long. What? I want a green one. Why? <laughs> I want to sit my Nintendo light in front of me and use that controller instead of having to hold it. It, no, it's just, it just looks like a lot of fun, doesn't it? And you're right, it would only be playable with very small children's hands. Um, and, but actually, going by this article, there's no indication that this works with the Nintendo Lite. They only quote it working with the Nintendo it's, um, Switch itself, not the Switch Lite. Um, so I don't know if it will or not. But, it, but they're also saying it will work with the Raspberry Pi and other stuff too. So don't be so miserable. It looks like good fun. <laughs> well, midway down that article, there is a link that says... Um there are two colours available, um, blue and mint green. So unlike 8-Bit Do's compact light controller, you'll be able to um, do any uh, colour match with your Nintendo Switch Lite. Oh, so yeah. Whilst they don't say it, it works, they do imply that it works. Yeah, they don't, it's not suggesting that you just put it next to it so it's the same colour. <laughs> <laughs> you, but you can't use it. <laughs> it doesn't work, but it, it matches. <laughs> Very nice, anyway. Nets. I thought it was fun. Well, the latest uh, entry into the gaming world is the Nef- is Netflix, because they are testing game streaming on Google TV, Roku, and uh, you can use your phone as a controller, which um, sounds awful, to be honest. Um, it's also available, hopefully going to be available, on the Amazon Fire TV, Google Chromecast TV, NVIDIA Shield, Walmart on, which I don't think we have, LG TVs and Samsung Smart TVs. Uh, and they're, they're going to be putting out a game which I actually know, uh, Oxenfree, which is a, a rather good game. It's not the most demanding, so I don't think they're going for AAA titles here. Uh, but they're going for slightly more ambitious mobile gaming, I suppose. Mm. And there's another one called Mole Hughes Mining Adventure. Uh, which I have never heard of before. I'm doing a quick have a, uh, Google just to see what it looks like, and that didn't help. A gem mining a arcade game. Yeah, it looks garbage. <laughs> um, but uh, th- this could be the start of something special if they're going to be streaming games as opposed to the way they currently have their games where they provide it through the, the a link through their Netflix app, which takes you to the Google Play Store to be able to download the game to your device. Uh, this uh, this could be them entering the ring yeah. um, and and laying down firm foundations because if they get a, a killer wee game at this stage, something like Flappy Bird or something, or or Angry Birds, you know that kind of game that where people sit there and actually play it on their TV, then they they could corner the market because. Streaming services are garbage when it comes to games. Um, I watched a, a breakdown on YouTube the other day. There was a fella, I can't remember his name, but he, he went through all nine that are currently available and he voted Xbox and PlayStation as the best. Um, despite the fact he said they were rubbish. You know, PlayStation hasn't changed their... Uh, their actual service, aside from adding more content in seven or eight years, and Xbox is prone to constant crashes and 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 problems whenever you're actually trying to play the game, and yeah, so Netflix could could show people how it's done because they they stream movies rather well, and hopefully it'll just be included in the price. So if you've got a Roku like I have or a, or a Google TV then you would go to the Roku, open up Netflix, choose the um, game that you want to play from the menu inside Netflix, and then hook up the phone with your Netflix account, and both will know what's going on, and you'll be able to use your phone to control the game on the telly. Is that right? From what I gather so far, I'd like to think they'll be able to extend that to a Bluetooth controller, um, because the likes of the NVIDIA Shield and the Amazon Fire TV, they had controllers that people could dust off and, and, and try to get working again. I don't know that Roku ever did, 
But there is a crucial part here that it says on PCs, the games will be playable through the web using keyboard and mouse. But on TVs, uh, the games will be required, uh, will require a phone based controller. Right. Which, which, um, d- which throws the question up where I was going with this about mm-hmm. latency and lag. Because whenever I try to do this with any other setup um, via Bluetooth, um, you, you know, you're playing, um, let's say, um, a pinball game, and when you press mm-hmm. the flipper button, it, you know, it takes, you, you miss the ball because by the time the message gets across, the ball's dead. You know, it just doesn't work, so it needs to work properly. Well, I think that's where the uh, the inspiration comes from. One of those titles there, Oxen Free, is not a fast action game. Right. <laughs> um, you're not going to notice too much latency with it, so it might be a good testing ground to see how many people actually give it a go. But it's a it's an interesting enough game that people will get thoroughly absorbed in it and actually care. Right. Netflix are are they, they do those trivia things as well? You know they, they sort of abuse the system that's there uh, to to have you play a game. And I I have had a go with the the trivia games. <laughs> we used this. We we did. Um, there was there's an adult version and then there's the kid version. <laughs> I, I actually think that the kid version had harder questions than the adult version. It's worth <laughs> having a look just for a laugh. Just how difficult some of those questions are in the kids one mm. um because they are they're they're out there they're, they are not kid focused questions right. let's not say they're adult they're they're just they're really difficult yeah. like uh but the, the, uh, oxen free i think is a is a very good start um it's a good absorbing uh absorbing graphic adventure with a bit of arcadey stuff built into it so I, I reckon that's a very safe way for them to go right. rather than straight out the box with a halo or a halo type clone or something or a street fighter type clone because those are the ones that you really notice the latency yeah, on. yeah. yeah. indeed indeed you do Okay, um, that will bring us on to Flappy Trap by an app where uh, Google is entering into a lawsuit that is a five billion dollar lawsuit <laughs> that's, that's a billion not million but billion uh, over the uh, chrome incognito mode and how much it's actually tracking uh, you and there's been complaints made about this um and and google are sticking to their guns saying no no uh we we collect this information and don't collect that information other websites might collect this information and we warn you every time you use it about that uh, what do you think? Uh, is there a is there a hope that Google could actually crumble here? Well, that, that, that's a, a fair summary, really, of what this is about. I think that the five billion dollars is because it's a what is it the Americans call it a um, class action where there's there's yes. there's millions of people that are, are potentially going to get a payout, um, and. Yes, you're you're quite right. And in, um, Google is sitting there saying, "Well, we every time you go to use in incognito, we tell you exactly what is what's what. You have to tap a button to say yes, I agree. And so, what's the problem? But what they're saying, what the the lawsuit people are saying, I think, is that the people putting the lawsuit forward is that it's not um, it's not detailed enough. It's not you know that the, the, the I, I, I don't know if you ever use incognito mode. I, I sometimes use incognito mode if I'm searching for something on Google which I don't want to be part of my history. So, for example, um, if I'm looking up... I don't know who Justin Bieber is, for example. and I, But I don't want Google to start thinking that I'm a Justin Bieber fan. So I go and mm. look it up in incognito. Um, or, you know, I, th- that's just one example. But there are lots of ways in which you don't want your data to be with Google. But what they're saying is that, actually, even though your Google um, are not collecting that data, your ISP might be collecting the data, and the websites you visit might be collecting the data, and other people might be collecting it, but we're not, at least not on the device and that's where the incognito mode is different to... Uh, it, it's all a bit of a um, you know you, you, a deep dive to understand who's saying what, really, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it is, yeah, but it's, it's always bothered me the way that's, that, that is worded, worded, where they say Chrome won't save the following information. Your browsing history, your 
cookies and site data and information entered in forms. Instead of saying what we do actually save when you're using incognito mode is, you know, it's 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 easier to say what you don't do right. whenever, and mm. that way you don't have to tell anyone what what you do do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think that that's probably the way this is going to go. Is mm. yeah, you're not being clear about what you are saving of people. So Ted, whenever you're looking up Justin Bieber and and those bikini women that he hangs out with, um, there is a good chance that. Google knows exactly which bikini women you're focusing on, even though and how often you visit. Even them. though they're suggesting that that they don't. There, see, there yeah. seems to be a thing about on device going on, which I'm not quite sure I understand. Google, part of Google's defence is that we only ever said that incognito mode doesn't it, it, it stops the the data being saved to your device or something like that. Um, yeah, not actually on our servers. I don't know. It's a bit of a complicated one. It is. It is. There's just not enough information there, and I'm I'm sure there probably is extensive information in small print uh, in the terms and conditions somewhere, somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but uh, who's going to go through that? I'll tell you <laughs> what. The lawyers. Whenever it's a five billion dollar lawsuit. Mm. Okay. Uh, YouTube Shorts is going to block links um, that are included in the video descriptions uh, because spammers are ruining everything. What's happening here? You use well, YouTube I Shorts, do, don't you? I, no, uh, no, I don't. I use TikTok. But y you create YouTube Shorts. You should know about this. Because as I understand <laughs> it, what happens... You see, I didn't even know until Steve Litchfield pointed it out to me. I didn't know when you're looking at YouTube Shorts that if you click... Um, a button somewhere you can see all the stuff that the the, the information about the what the 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 creator has put in there i didn't know that yeah. um and that's the as i understand it that's the bit in there that they're taking the links out of because that's the bit that is being spammed and nobody can see that unless they know how to click that button to go there and who's going to do that you're scrolling through vertical um clips of video no one's going to go and look at all that data are they that's what i said to steve i said i bet you nobody knows that it's even there you're putting these links in there and what have you and what have you but nobody's going to look at those i never look at that information in tiktok you just scroll through and have a laugh and see what's going on um on you move so I don't know. I, you know, I, do you put data in yours when you've done those few? You've only done a few, haven't you? I have. Yeah, I, I do plan on following them up. I just took a couple of weeks off there because it was the summer, and I, I've been thinking about what to do. Mm. Um, yes, uh, you you can, and you can put in the, the likes of retail links on on YouTube videos and typical ones. That I'll always stick my little Amazon in there, where people can go and buy it from Amazon. Yeah you know um as affiliate link um and th it would be the same with youtube shorts but uh i've always had a theory or a feeling that where your description might have a link that leads people away from youtube youtube won't recommend your video quite as much and cuz uh, there's been a few times where i've done a couple of videos that have done an awful lot better uh, where I haven't had any links that, that take people away from the YouTube platform. Yeah. You know, they click on it and go to Amazon, maybe they get uh, away in, or they disappear down there um, and don't come back to YouTube. So I think they're, they're worried about losing people and they might be just be using this as a bit of a guise to, to stop people from doing that, to take away the ability to link to other websites. Oh, right. And redirect traffic. Well, the more chaotic um, version of this, somewhere down the line, possibly, is if they do it to the main YouTube videos. Because for decades now, people have been putting huge amounts of links onto their main YouTube videos. Just just look down and, and uh, you know, there's, there's tons and tons of them. And that's just going to yeah. destroy what's going on, really, in the whole, the whole platform. Well, yeah, it, it absolutely will. You know, th there's Whenever you put out a certain amount of content on YouTube, uh, the, the money that comes back in isn't terribly much. And every year it kind of goes down. They, they find a way of, of taking an extra certain percentage 
off you so you don't make any money I, I, I don't make anything off youtube anymore with the the videos that are on there but i still see i get a, a monthly report to say hey your videos have are a weekly report of this uh your videos have have, have received over sixty thousand views it's like right okay and what are you going to give me that for that oh you you've earned two pounds 40p <laughs> right so you have to subsidize elsewhere and you, you stick in that affiliate lead, and that, at least that way you get a gift card yeah. every six months or something <laughs> like that. So it makes it a wee bit worth your while. But more recently, I, I just haven't been bothered with it because it does take an awful lot of time. And I don't think the rewards from YouTube are particularly good. And also th things like this get thrown in that, that cause you problems, yeah. that, that just genuinely take you away from the whole thing. And uh, the likes of the big names, they just... They will be given a, a completely different um, approach, you know, say the, the Phil DeFranco or whatever, or uh, MKBHD or whatever it is. Um, they, they will just be, uh, they'll be allowed to put links in, I'm sure, <laughs> because if they were to stop producing that content um, and, and losing out on, on that coin, then, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll find somewhere else to post their videos. Yeah. Load of bollocks, isn't it? Tez, Tez, it's just uh, they're they're Somebody, probably working on it. Being murdered, yeah. Oh, I can't hear out. Oh, that's good. I thought you'd have heard that. There was a child screaming. <laughs> oh dear. Right, carry on. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, we're going to move into Google Gallows territory. So do mm, tell us what's happening just, over at Google Gallows. Before we do, you missed one story out there that I just wanted to quickly cover, oh, which was Microsoft ah. letting... I, I'm all Windows 11 up at the moment. And apparently, somewhere down the line, that Microsoft are going to let you uninstall more built-in Windows 11 apps. Um, so it will feel less bloated. And I did notice that when I was setting up my Windows 11 Pro, that there are that there is tons of... It's a bit like, you know, for someone who's got an Android phone, saying, I don't want to use Google Apps, thank you very much, but they're all there, and you've, 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 you've got no, no choice, pretty much. If you don't want to use them, you set them aside and use other ones, but they're all there. And, and anyway, Windows 11, I think, is the same. Tons and tons of applications, and the report is that soon Microsoft are responding to that and saying, we will let you uninstall more of those things if you don't want to use them down the line somewhere. Mm. Yeah, so okay. That's good. That's useful. Yeah, Google Gallows and Chrome Coroner. Um, a few things. Google Search can now check your grammar. I've tried this on Android and on the web, and that works really nicely. So if you go to a search engine, sorry, a search field, and you type in a piece of um, text, a, uh, a sentence, and after it you type um, check grammar, it checks it for you and tells you why it's grammatically crap. And so um, that works. I've tested it on both. Um, Gmail for Android and iOS is adding a translate feature. Um, I've seen this working on um, Gmail on the web, but I can't see it working on Android yet. Um, but they're going to let you translate. So if someone sends you an email in, I don't know, Chinese or something, or Japanese, in, in my case, because I, I know some Japanese people... Um, it, you'll get a button that pops up to say, do you want to translate this, and what language do you want to translate it into? That works on the web, but it's not in Android. And, um, and I don't know about iOS, but it's not on Android at the moment. Um, there's an auto-zoom in feature coming to Android that can help you to focus in on QR codes, which actually is quite handy. When I set up phone link, I'm always having to move the phone around to try and line it up. Um, to get the QR code in the right place in the camera. And this one, apparently, coming in Android 14 maybe, is that it's going to allow you to zoom in. Sorry, it will do it for you. It will zoom into the yeah. QR code. And you don't have to fart about trying to find it and lining it up. Google Keep. Two things for Google Keep. They're rolling out a basic version um, of... Um, uh, uh, sorry, a, a, a basic version history. So the, the 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 version history in Google Docs has saved my bacon a few times, to be honest, where you can just roll back um, on the fly to any previous version of the document and the Google server has kept it and you can just see what was what and, and mend mistakes that you've made and blah, blah, blah. That's coming to... Um, 
um, Google Keep now. And the other Google Keep thing is that you can start doing rich formatting. So text formatting. I checked this um, on my Android device, even on Android 14 Beta on the Pixel, and that's not that yet, not there yet. But there is a placeholder that says coming soon, and then you should be able to get some text formatting, like you know, basics of italic and bold and what have you, um, coming soon. I linked to a story about that in the show notes, which gives you a um, a GIF demo of how that all works. Um, hmm. Google Dark Web Monitor. You probably most people listening to this probably got a um, email in the week from Google saying that inside Google One, if you're a Google One customer, you can turn on dark web monitoring, which gives you a report based on what you want to know of the historical association with your personal data on the dark web. I put mine in, and there was nine results, all from 2018, and all to do with um, alleged um, changes. This, And also, it's fair to say that all of them were before I started using two-factor authentication. But your, yeah. your mileage may vary on that. Uh, to me, it felt a bit historic and not really necessarily up-to-date, so check that one out. Um Google is that Google One exclusive? So do you have to subscribe, subscribe yeah. to Google One yeah. to get that? Yeah, apparently okay. so. It's a, it becomes a button in your Google One um, setup or on the web. You can see it there. You can turn it on. Anyway, there you go. Um, Google might be implementing hardware requirements for future foldables, which is something that crept out, um, which was saying that Google might start to say to OEMs, to manufacturers, you've got to comply with this um, level of build quality or this level of app compliance or this level of this, that or the other. So in other words, Google are going to do an Apple. They're going to say um, to anyone that wants to play with us, then you've got to do it this way because we don't want our customers getting a crap experience on foldable devices. The future is in foldable they are clearly saying and we want the customers to be um, the ones that are paying 1800 quid for for devices or thereabouts to get a good experience so that's coming along um and the last one was google soon offering apple style cross device integration which takes a bit of drilling down into because i with my pixel and my chromebook and my windows computer i already get some of this um kind of cross-device integration whereby you sign into one thing and you can use another. They're quoting things like making phone calls. So on Apple um, ecosystem you can um, switch on the fly between devices and um, you know take a phone call but I can do that with my Windows computer I can do it with Samsung Samsung I've, I've got that stitched up learning as you probably know Gareth um, yeah. mm-hmm. and so I'm not quite sure what it is specifically that Google are saying and I think that the answer is that they're going to say that you could, you'll be able to do this across any Android device any computing device you've got any tablet, any any PC the whole lot so whereas with apple's version you've got to kind of have the apple hardware and use all the services with google it's you know they, 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 there's obviously millions of different potential combinations of all that going on and they're they're aiming high here and saying we can make this happen so there we go there was my google stuff for the week right yeah okay well that's I think that last one's a bit it it always I didn't never understood why they did that even just the other day whenever I was signing in I was thinking this with Google One they kind of sell it to you where you can back up your device and then you can download the backup to a new device if you need it but it it doesn't quite you know set itself up yeah like that like Apple does. I, yeah, I, I, to be honest, I have. I'm not an Apple user, and I and I don't know the depth to which Apple goes and what they're trying to um, compare it with here. Um, well, it did. Um, I used it a wee while ago for my mother. Um, she had an older iPad, and it was getting really slow, and it wasn't working terribly well. And she kept running out of space, so I, we got her a new one, and uh, she basically just signed into it and signed out of the old one and everything just moved across and it it was so simple 
<laughs> really. Right. Nice. The, but, but they're talking here about the fact that you can take. They, they seem to be focused in on making phone calls and receiving phone calls, and that if you had two Android devices, supposing you had a Sony phone and a Xiaomi phone, that if mm-hmm. someone phoned you on one of those two devices, you would be able to continue having the conversation with them on the other device. So it wouldn't any longer rely on a SIM card, but they would use presumably Wi-Fi and any other connectivity you can get hold of in order to keep making that happen. And I think that's what Apple can do already if you've got it set up right. Okay. I think. Yeah. Well, maybe folks can tell us about mm. that. But yeah, if they do something like that, and we're, we've already got like FaceTime and things, I think you can you can swap between those and iMessage and all that. But then there are there's a possibility they're going to be leaving the UK fairly soon, oh, which yeah. <laughs> will make things even more difficult. <laughs> yeah. oh dear. Maybe it just won't be available here. Be expected to pay the same price, yeah. but they won't get the same level of service. Did you do a, um, a dark web thingy on yours? I did, yeah. Um, I, there wasn't too many, and there certainly weren't. Well, there was quite recently from, I think it was Twitter was the most recent, uh, where it was just name and email address had been leaked. But, right. yeah, uh, there was only about 10 or so, um, dating back to 2012. Yeah, yeah. I, I got the impression it was all pre two factor authentication and not terribly modern data, but um, yeah, it's quite interesting to see anyway. Yeah, there was some that I didn't recognize at all. There was, I think there was one called The Dirty Papers or something like that, and I, I didn't, but that was from like 2014, wow. and I can't think what that was or. It, it, was, it wasn't linkable, like. You could click on Twitter and it would tell you about Twitter, what happened. But th- this was just a, a, a black line of text saying dirty papers or dirty something. Mm. Dirty, dirty pictures, boy. Probably dirty d- boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, there was, uh, yeah, that, that, that's everything for that. I thought you left one out, but no, no, you got them all. Mm. Nice, nice. Well, we're going to continue on with you. For hark back, because you brought along a doozy. This is a Sony Tablet P, and um, I, do you know, I can't remember, in all honesty, if I had one of these or whether I just studied it long and hard. And it, 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 it's a, a folding tablet, basically. Sony brought this out in <coughs> um, two thousand and eleven. And it looks like, when it's closed up, it's a landscape device, a bit like a Nokia E90. Um, it looks like a kind of giant glasses case, <laughs> and it's, it's yeah. kind of shaped really oddly. And you open this thing up um, sideways, so it's, um, it, 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 it's um, facing you in landscape, and the, it's got two screens inside. So it's been likened to the Surface Duo, except with the Surface Duo, you can wrap it right the way round back on itself. With this, you can't. But likened because it's two separate screens. It's not a foldable screen, clearly. The tech wasn't around then. And you've got two separate um, uh, screens, one on top and one on bottom. Um, some of the applications were designed to work with that so it worked quite well but there was always going to be a gap down the middle like with the surface duo um the experience most for most apps however was a bit crap and the you know they they just didn't kind of work with the the the, the thing at all this was released with um android um and it was honeycomb at the time in 2011 and so that was a bit clunky as well i'll also link to a review which was done by michael fisher for um pocket now back in the day and um he does a nice little run through of of, of, because he 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 got hold of one from ebay a, a few years ago and um had a kind of run through with it and got it working which is really interesting um But yeah, dated hardware. He says that the speakers were crap. Um, And I I, I think I remember that being so from the time. Um, But it's just an interesting device, something different, something that Sony were trying. um, Beautifully made, as you'd imagine, um, with um, um, an SD card slot, incidentally. Um, In terms of um, chipset, it had an NVIDIA Tegra 2 T20. Now, you might 
remember that. I don't particularly. I do, yeah. yeah the tech, Have you yeah. got one of these devices uh, um, in stock there? No, no, okay. I don't. Um, do you remember having no, one? I never had one. No, okay. No. I, I, I can't remember if I had one or not. I've got a feeling I didn't because it was too expensive, and I can't remember how much it cost, to be honest. Um, they're obviously available secondhand if you can find one now. But it's got, you know, it's got the makings of what Microsoft were trying to do, I think, with the, you know, back 12, 13 years ago with the, the Surface Duo. Um, with the folding two folding screens in in that way, it's just that it was early. I think that the the article that I was linking to was was saying that this is all great, but it was just far too early to make it happen and to make it work, which is a real shame because it was really nice. And it's a it's a telephone as well, so you can see from the the YouTube video with Michael Fisher that he uses it dialing numbers and so forth. Um, yeah, great device, lovely slice of nostalgia. And um, worth a look at the links that we'll put in the show notes. What do you reckon? Oh, yeah, I remember this um, being talked about it. I've never seen one in the flesh. And I wasn't even sure that it had been fully released. It came out around the same time as the, the Tablet S, which was you know a, a, a more traditional tablet that had a, a bit of a design oh, flourish. Yeah, that's right. Um, it, it's pictured there yeah, as well yeah. um, in, in one of the articles that you've linked to. Mm. But, um, yeah, I, I always wondered if this would really... If, if this had have become a thing, would we have seen... And, you know, if this had sold really well, if it had been priced correctly, would we have seen a folding screen sooner? Yeah, yeah. You know, because that was the logical update to this, mm. uh, was to get rid of that band in the middle. Um, and and make the hinge part of the screen. And, uh, mm. th- there were there was a missed opportunity, and I think Samsung sh- or Sony even should have uh, should have carried down that that path that they were going with this because it it does look like an excellent uh, device. See if for if you were watching a movie, then you would have a big black bar right yeah, through the yeah. middle of it because that's how the screen actually worked on it, yeah. a bit like the. Surface. Or you just work, watch it in one half and not the other. Yeah, yeah. I suppose that's what most people are probably looking at that um, Sony Tablet S. I had one of those. I'd forgotten about that yeah? completely. Yeah, I definitely had that because and and if you read down the article, they only released that one of those before they realised that the design was a bit crap, and so they <laughs> they released another one which was slightly designed slightly differently. The Xperia Tablet S. What was the other one called then? The, um, uh, what? Oh, oh yeah, really oh yes, it one. was the Sony Tablet S, the wonky shaped one, and then it became the Xperia Tablet S, and then ah. that became thinner and much more ergonomically pleasing, and all the rest of it. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely had one of the the the, the wedge shaped ones. I remember that very clearly. Um, but again, it ran honeycomb around the same time, by the looks of it. Yeah, is it, looking back, it it feels like it was such a long time ago with these yeah. early versions of um, Android, earlier versions. And yet, when you look at them in action, if you look at a, a YouTube video of someone using one, you think, good grief, was that only 10 years ago that we were doing that? And accepting <laughs> that clunky interface, you think, good grief... How how quickly all this has moved on to a point where we're talking about you know Tab S nine with silkily fluid graphics and wonderfully evolved versions of Android that just do everything and yeah yeah interesting stuff yeah yeah I'm I'm actually having a quick look through CEX because I managed to link to the or find a link to the Sony Tablet S yeah. they currently. Or they're out of stock, but they were selling them for forty-five pounds. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I think you could you could turn it on anyway. Yeah, but then, you know, in in those days, there was all to play for when it came to Android tablets, yeah. and every manufacturer was really trying to have the coming thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I I loved it. You know, wow, the Sony Lens G. Oh, blimey, they've got some of those in. What's that? The Lens G. Yeah, that was the the 
the Bluetooth lens that you could take pictures with on your phone. 18 megapixel camera for phones and tablets. The Q10. Oh, yeah, I remember the QX10. The, the, the QX10 and the QX100. Um, I actually had one of those two, and they worked really well, um, and they were very impressive. But it, without a, a phone, you can't do anything with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> QX100, I wonder they have one of those for sale. Mm, they do. Mm. 100 points. Wow. Mm. Oh, out of one stock. of them had yeah. a ten times zoom, I think, and one of them had a three times, I think, or was it five times? Uh, the difference between them was, I think, the zoom and an aperture. Um, the aperture was different as well, I think. I can't remember now. <laughs> well, we could research that for another yeah. day because that would be a good hardback. Mm. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I like those Sony tablets, and I remember having the Sony Tablet Z. Which uh, had, I think it was the first one with quad speakers, maybe. But I remember the sound being particularly good on that one. And when Sony asked for it back, I was trying to think, should I skip country? I could go and (laughs) move to Jersey or somewhere like that and live as a goot with a tablet. (laughs) And it it, it had a lovely back to it. I remember the feel of the back. But Sony did make good tablets back in the day. They make good everything, which is why that's so... They still do, you know. When you, whatever Sony make, they just seem to. They don't do any plastic, fantastic, crappy stuff. It's just it, whatever they do, they just do wholeheartedly. It seems and make it really nice. Objects of desire. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, more objects of desire are in the bargain basement, and you'll get them cheaper than normal, and we'll run through them. No. Uh, at the start, I'm going to go with a camera. Actually, the, and it's the first time we've ever featured this particular brand in the bargain basement, I believe. Uh, this is the GoPro Hero 9. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a 5K Ultra HD camera that's 20 megapixel photos and 1080p live streaming. It's a webcam. It's got stabilization built into it. It comes in black and has a uh, LCD on the front and the back. Uh, everybody knows a GoPro, and um, I think YouTube wouldn't be where it was without GoPro. Um It's a beautiful looking camera and it's down from £249 to £219. But I did notice that there were payment plans as well. well. And you can get the Amazon monthly payments of £43 for five months uh, just to make it a wee bit more bankable. But it's swung back the other way again, isn't it? You're you're getting them now and I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. See, that that actually puts this down into kind of dash cam territory as well, where you can hook it up to your car and, and film while you're driving and stuff. It's so, the, the, uh, they're yeah. designed for action, though, aren't they? The people out abseiling and and cycling and stuff, aren't they, really? They are, but also you know, the walking tours and things people use them for, just a small camera right. to be able to bop about okay. with and, and get... Uh, some some footage mm-hmm. with as you need without having to worry about dropping it. Okay, right. What Back you got? to Sony Objects of Desire. We have the Xperia Five Mark IV, which I can um, tell you is a wonderful phone. Uh, Two hundred pound off, um, presumably because they know the Mark Five's around the corner. Although nothing's been announced yet. Seven hundred and forty-eight quid at the moment from nine four nine. Nine four nine is horribly overpriced, but. Uh-huh. Um, that was the price that it was yesterday. Yeah, seven forty eight thirty nine. Recommended very highly. Yeah, it's a good looking phone, and we featured it a number of times on here, haven't we? We have, but never with two hundred pound mm. off. No, no, good deal, good deal. Uh, next up is a thing that I bought, but I gave it to my stepdaughter as soon as it arrives because she really wanted it, and I had to hand it over. Uh, this is the Crucial X6 one terabyte portable SSD, which does up to 800 megabytes per second, and it connects to your PC and Mac, and you can use it as storage on the go. She hooks it up to her camera and then backs up all her SD card gubbins to it whenever she's doing a photo shoot. Uh, there's the one terabyte, which is available, and it's been dropped in price from £105 to £49.98, which is roughly what I paid for it, but I think I paid over 50 for it. So it's hit below 50 quid, which is around about 52% off. 
I don't reckon that it's sold for £105 for quite some time, but £49.98 98p is a terrific amount of money for a wee portable SSD like this uh, to take with you in a fairly tough little case. And I'm, I am offering being offered five months of £10 for that. Me too. So I haven't been rejected completely. <laughs> Not today. What's the two terabyte one? Is that as cheap? Uh, 86. Yeah, that's that's 50% off as well, pretty much. 54. 86.99. Yeah. Mm. But no monthly payments no, on no, that for me. It's not for no. me either. Very nice indeed. Good stuff. Right. Um, Pixel Watch. Um, I, presumably because the version 2 is round the corner, they've started to reduce the prices of the Pixel Watch. So this is the Wi Fi version. 249 quid on Amazon. Um, oh, no, it's gone down even more. Look. 229 pounds it is now. Um, well, it yeah. is for the silver version anyway. Um, and it's reduced by, you know, 110 quid. They, yeah, they're obviously um, clearing out stock, making way for the new ones, aren't they? But, yeah, that's a bit of a bargain. Mum's got one of these watches, and she just loves it. She thinks it's great. The black one is 229 as well. The champagne gold one is 229 And the obsidian is 229 So they're all 229 Very, very good indeed. I'm being offered uh, five months on that at forty-five ah, eighty as well. Which we colour? Um, well, that, that's just the silver, silver. chalk. Let me see if I've got offers on that. Uh, no, no, no offers for me. No. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, uh, I am. Forty-five pound eighty a month. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting that on all right. of them. Very, very nice. Not that I'd have a Pixel Watch. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, next up is well, actually this. This uh, originally I saw it as Easy Ack E A S Y A C C, which is a company that I remember reviewing stuff of years ago, and I really liked because I I still have one of their power banks somewhere. Uh, but uh, the, when I clicked through to it, I saw this one, which was even better value. Uh, this is Tisutek. T-I-S-O-U-T-E-K and it's a Bluetooth keyboard uh, and it has a backlight to it um, it has a wee on-off button it's got a connect button and it looks like a just a decent wee uh, USB Type-C charging keyboard to take with you or throw in your bag when you're on the go because I quite fancied a little key- keyboard for my, my tablet but not one that was attached all the time but when I was looking at it, initially the picture looks quite good. But if you go down to the review section, it would appear, as you scroll across, that for some reason uh, there's been a bit of a redesign and it actually has a touchpad on it as well. Oh, no, that's the 7. If you, if you click on the, at the top there, it says Style 6 or Style 7. Um, the Style 7 is twenty six ninety five because I just clicked through to that. And that's the one that's got a touchpad on it. But it also has rounded keys. Yes. Whereas the pictures in the review section have square keys. Oh, sorry. Okay. Right. So, uh, but it does um, keep the same pictures uh, as I flip to the reviews on the other one. So, yeah, the original one that I was talking about, banging on about there, um, was nine ninety nine, and then the 07 is twenty six yeah. ninety five, which is a good bit more expensive for that, what looks like the touchpad. But uh, I, I thought that looked like a fairly decent little yeah. uh, Bluetooth keyboard just to chuck in a bag. Yeah, yeah, it does. I'm not sure that trackpads are needed, really. I, I, you know, Going back to the Samsung Galaxy Tab, um, S8 in my case and S9 in your case I've got a um, a case a cover with that which has got the keyboard but not the trackpad mm. um, and it's much smaller because of it and, and I think to myself I don't really like touchpads very much trackpads very much if I want to do that I'll use the S Pen or I'll use a mouse um, and I think that by doing that you just save a lot more did you get one of those covers with yours as well? No I didn't I just went with that book cover no. But I was thinking for decks, this might be quite useful if if I suddenly end up in a in a hotel room desperately needing to 
do a bit of more hardcore computing as you do so frequently hardcore something in life yeah. <laughs> you dirty beast hotel room. Um, yeah so very nice indeed and very cheap isn't it Nine ninety nine for a backlit yeah, yeah. Bluetooth keyboard. I think that's pretty good. Roku Stream Bar is next. Something else we visit often. One hundred twenty nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. It was. It's now eighty four thirteen. We quite often see that at wow. ninety nine quid, um, but now eighty four thirteen. It is coming from a third party seller, but even so, good price and thoroughly recommended. I've actually been waiting for them to beef that up and do a, a two, a second, a yeah. second one uh, that might have some revision, even in. more nice. sound. <laughs> yeah, or something else like uh, a controller for LED lights. Mm-hmm. Or something like <laughs> um, okay, next up is this one. is an SD card reader, and it's by Bikel, B-E-I-K-E-L-L. And it's a USB Type-C and USB 3.0 uh, USB card reader. Um, and it, it just actually looked like a cute little card reader to plug into the side of your your laptop that says that it gets up to 5,120 megabits per second. But it only costs £3.98, which makes it super cheap. And it's aluminium. Blimey. So not plastic, but aluminium. That looks really good, doesn't it? £3.98. These things are so easy to lose. I've bought tons of them over the last (laughs) number of years, and I can't find any of them. I found one of them... um, a, a wee while ago in a shoe at the bottom of my wardrobe um, so I've been using that since <laughs> but uh, this looks like a decent little option yeah. for for no money at all Three ninety. It's really cheap isn't it nice cool and lastly back to objects of desire and an oft an oft visited um, item from Sony the XM4 headphones One hundred ninety eight ninety five. I think I'm not sure, but I think this is the lowest price I've ever seen them at. You don't need the XM5s. The XM4s are perfectly good enough and in some ways have an advantage over the XM5s. So, um, you know, grab them while you can. Can you see it cheaper than that? Um, No, I can't see it I I had a look on Keeper and I think that they were suggesting that at one time, a long time ago, that it was slightly cheaper, but um, no, no, that's changed now. I think this probably is no. the cheapest it's been. It has the the, the last. It was anywhere near this was one nine nine, yeah. but you've beaten that yeah. by a pound and four. I p. really do recommend these headphones. I know I keep banging on about it, but they're so good. They're they're just. I think the best headphones I've ever had, and they're just they've got all the. Um, Google Smarts in them that work just beautifully. Really, really good sound. Excellent. Very nice. Yes. Excellent headphones. I would like them. But I'm not going to because I've got a couple of pairs of excellent headphones. Right, well that's about us bringing up to the the two-hour mark. I've got two gentlemen waiting for me downstairs to get some hard work done. (sighs) And you didn't make a comment about that at all. Well <laughs> done, Ted. Hotel rooms. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I will bid you adieu. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, you can by emailing us at gareth at techaddicts.uk. And you can find us on Twitter as well, at techaddictsuk. You can find me on Twitter too, at Gareth Miles, G-A-R-E-T-H-M-Y-L-E-S. I am also on The Mastodon. Um, and you can find me at garethmiles.com if you get lost. Um, there's a Ko-Fi on there if you want to buy me a drink, like... All those other people who have done so. Um, Ted, where can they find you? you? They can find me at tedsalmon.com. All the stuff that I do links out from there. Audio podcasts and MeWe groups. Links away. PayPal.me forward slash Ted Salmon is if, if you want to buy me a coffee. I'm very, very grateful for those that do. And I'm on Mastodon as well. As well. And I've started using it again recently. So perhaps we'll um, bump into each other, th- in each other there, Gareth. Yes, yes, quite right. All right, well, I hope you have a wonderful week and we'll be talking at you next week. Um, No, in two weeks' time uh, for another big update on all things technology. Take care now. Bye.